Tell me, tell me more about Spark. I mean, you spend a lot of time with Spark. Help, help us to understand sure. maybe, you know, what's the architecture, what's the moving mm -hmm. pieces, why do you like Spark? And um, if you like to, you know, there's Marcos, sure. there's a chalkboard, so feel free. But um, okay. so, so how did you get to Spark and what is exciting so, about it? So, so I, met, I met Matei, who is the main contributor or the founder of Spark at, um, it's at one of the Hadoop meetups where essentially, you know, he was, he was just, you know, uh, showcasing his pro uh, project so he's uh, you know he used to be a grad student out of uh, Berkeley mm -hmm. UC Berkeley and that was his project and so at that time or it still is fairly small so it was I think on the order of like 15,000 uh, lines of Scala code mm -hmm. and so he thought what if I could give essentially people the option of either you know, process my data similar to Hadoop, where I like load something from this through the processing, spill it back, mm -hmm. or I can say, hey, you know what? If you have enough RAM, you can also just say, hey, cache this particular data set in memory, mm -hmm. and then apply these operations in memory. Mm -hmm. And so it works sort of in in both ways. And so what what essentially uh, what he did to sort of ease the transition is um, he's essentially building everything on top of. Um, He's he has basically HDFS as like the basis, so you can use pretty much any input format mm -hmm. as like the your your source. But it's a Hadoop input format to get yeah. the key value tables. Yeah, okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so and you know they can process JSON files, but the point is that you know in our case, for example, we run this on MapR. So, mm -hmm. but you know any 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 Hadoop distribution would actually do. And then on top of it, typically you. So why are you using that bar? Well, if if you look at mm, the other distribution map R, I think is has a pretty kick-ass file system. Mm -hmm. So you know you can NFS mount it on the data scientist uh, boxes and just access the data. It's obviously limited to you know the the speed of the the network interface, which is not suitable for large amounts of data, mm -hmm. but it's good enough if the data scientists say, hey, want to say, hey, I want to just like poke at this data, load it in R, and then play around with. Mm -hmm. Um, Sorry, I interrupted you. So sure, that's fine. Bar HDFS and then yeah. input format. Yeah, and so essentially what you would do is you would co-locate, you know, like in good old Hadoop fashion, the data nodes would be co-located with the, the Spark uh, mm -hmm. workers. Okay. And so essentially what you would have is, well, this is kind of weird because I'm, you know, I'm sort of mixing physical with logical. So, you know, if you would say this is a, this is a data node, you would, you know, run your Spark Spark worker, worker in here. And so you would get data locality essentially. So, you know, mm -hmm. through the input format, the IP yeah. address, it would actually find out. So it, you would get the same locality advantages that you have Hadoop, with Hadoop. And then so, guess, so Spark yes. then directly the data, um, the, the Spark workflow directly integrates with the data node or how is it getting the data locality thing? I correct, mean, correct. So you would, you would install them on the same box. Um, okay, but then you're accessing HDFS in the same. Mm. Let me think about this. How you integrate that then with the job uh, uh, name node? Well, so the so the name is node it, is it just is bypassing and just straight going off? The yeah, job? the name node is really just you know it would find out where the blocks are located and then it would schedule the jobs and the, it it works very much similar to what the task tracker would do. Yeah, okay, it's pretty much the same thing. But then they basically just implemented kind of a fake task tracker yeah it's the own task tracker so re yeah. really you'd only use the file system you wouldn't use any of the job okay. task trackers of because the apis all. itself for Hadoop are not really open for this right so to access data locality so i guess they just yeah. take the whole thing yeah i think i think you can actually get yeah i think you can get to it i thought okay. so yeah i thought so all right and, well, and it, it seems to work it okay. seems to work it seems <laughs> it seems to work yeah <laughs> Cool. And, and you've also Spark Master, it sort of, you know, has and a little web UI that... And then you push your jobs to Spark Master and it distributes to all the Spark Yeah, apps. the rest works really pretty much the exact same thing. So, so the, one of the big differences that they do that is, um, that is very impressive is if you look at... Let's not forget to drink. No, no, no. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. I got enough. Yeah, cool. So one of the, the cool things that Spark actually does is... You know, when, when you're in Hadoop land, um, you have the a jar mm -hmm. that is your job yeah. and you push it out, gets pushed out to all the nodes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you have a larger job that, you know, causes for some overhead. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so what, what Spark does is, let's say I have a map operation. So I have, you know, let's say I have a collection. Collection and I saw dot map. So mm -hmm. I'm running a map operation on it. Mm -hmm. I could basically say, you know, let's say this is my record. So this is Scala code record. And, and I say, I don't know what I would do with it. I would say record times two uh, times two. So, and so this would, you know, since it's functional programming, it would mm -hmm. actually, this result would be emitted as the, as mm -hmm. the result of that operation. And so Finally, closures. And so what it actually does, it serializes only the bytecode for that closure mm -hmm. and pushes that out to the, to the nodes. Okay. So we actually, it was so interactive that we actually drove uh, for, you know, so prototyping purpose, we drove actually our customer front end uh, through running jobs. Okay. Because running, starting a job takes maybe a, like, you know, maybe half a second, even less mm -hmm. than that, because it's really efficient about like what it actually pushes out to the node. And then mm -hmm. when you have it in memory, you really just, hmm. you know, run it, what, whatever it is in over in your So you nodes. kept all the data in memory all the time then? Yeah. Okay. And so, so, I mean, clearly, like I said, this is if you have a big CPU problem, this is great. And if you can afford the RAM, right? If you have petabytes of data, capital, right? So. exactly, exactly. <laughs>